Hey everyone, Michael here again with another video. Today we're going to be looking at lighting in Blender and some tips to improve your lighting in your renders. Uh, other than that, I have some two bonus tips at the end of the video as well, so make sure that you watch all the way until the end just to see exactly what they are. So first, let's look at the different lighting options. So let's just delete everything in the scene right now and let's press Shift A uh, and let's go to light. And we can see the four different uh, options that we have right now. Don't worry about the three point lights for the meantime, but let's just look at point, sun, spot, and area. So let's just take the point light first and you can see it'll present itself um, in a little ball like this. And let's just go to the lighting settings. So the point light is really the simplest lighting option. It emits light in all directions and is usually used if you want a single point to emit a light really, really brightly. So usually you can see these in renders when they're used for like lamps, building lights, etc. So let's just go into rendered view here so you can see exactly how it looks like. And let's just uh, let's turn off. Let's turn the world settings all the way to dark so that we can see the impact that it has. Now, let's press shift A and let's add in a cube so you can see exactly how this point light works. So let's add two cubes like this. We'll just move it to the middle. OK. So now let's click on the point light and we can see we have all the different options here. So we have the color, which changes the color of the light, as you can see here. We have the power, which is basically how strong the light is. We have the radius, which basically means how big the light is. And usually this translates to how soft the shadows are. Uh, we have max bounces, which you don't really have to worry about for now. But essentially, uh, this is a way for the computer to calculate how the light um, renders uh, it, like once you render it out, it calculates how the light bounces off the different objects. Casting shadows is super important. I suggest that you keep that on. Multiple importance. Not really sure what this is as well, but you can definitely look up all of the different options in the Blender documentation. But really, the most important ones are the color, power, radius uh, options. So let's just first increase the power all the way up to something really high, like, like 1000. And as you can see, the light is emitting... Uh, light in all directions as you can see it it's illuminating all the different cubes the one in the front the one in the back the one on the sides as well so this really is the simplest option if you just need to illuminate a scene really brightly really quickly although for finer tuning i don't really recommend using this light source because casting light in all directions and casting shadows everywhere in your scene could cause some problems down the line so what we can do now is that we can change uh, this point light into something else. So the next one I want to talk about is this area light. So let's again, let's just turn this back down to 10 watts. So the area light is another commonly used lighting option. You emit light in a shape in a single direction, which is um, represented by this line down here. Uh, the light is usually used to show light being emitted from a single source outwards towards an object or towards a different point. Uh, and it's also usually used in studio lighting setups to emulate floodlights and photography lights. So I'm just going to pull up um, an example of how I can use area lights in order to illuminate a subject, kind of like in a professional photography session. So let's look back here at the area light um, and let's just point it in a direction. So I can press R here to rotate it. Let's just rotate it like this. And let's just increase this to something like 100 watts. Now, you, as you can see, the light is... Uh, oops, the light is showing uh, down here and it's shining down on this first block here. Uh, but as you can see, the light starts diffusing across the different uh, cubes and it only shines light in this single direction. So if I'm going to push this across the cubes like this and you can see it's pointing past uh, this first cube on the left, you can see the, the cube on the right most is actually getting dark. That's because the light is only emitting in one direction. So again, like uh, as you saw in the example earlier, um, this is usually used in studio lighting, photography lighting, uh, and that's like a really good way to use this light. So yeah, I recommend using this if you're thinking about making a render like that. So now let's just control Z and go back to the original position of the light here. And let's change this now to the spotlight, which is the third light that I want to talk about. Uh, and let's just increase this to like 100 watts. So the spotlight is the one that I personally use the most in my renders. Uh, which is kind of strange uh, for environmental renders, but um, you'll see why. You can check out how I used it in my previous video. Uh, you can click the link on the top right. So it's basically the same like a real life spotlight uh, that people use for plays and on stage performances where it really wants to highlight one person or one object that's currently on stage. And the one, the light in Blender is exactly the same. Uh, you can use this for directional lighting that needs a little bit more fine tuning than area lighting. 
because you're able to change a lot more settings. So if we go down here, we can see there's a new uh, tab called beam shape and you can increase how big or small the spotlight is. You can see how much it blends uh, like this. As you can see, if it's a zero, uh, it's a really harsh edge. But if it's one, which is usually the setting that I use, uh, it's a little bit more of a gradient. And you can even show the cone, although I'm not really sure in what situation you'd be using something like this but honestly you know if you really need to show the cone coming out of something then you could click this option here uh, other than that the options are exactly the same let's just increase this to something really high like 5000 uh, and we can lower the spot size something like this so the way that i usually use it in my renders which you can see more in depth in the other video is that i usually use this as a single source of light with a low spot size and a high radius to make the shadows much smoother and also with blend set to one and this way i can have a uh, really easy directional lighting while also having a lot of professional settings that i can mess around with to really fine tune what i need for the scene so this is the third um light that's available to you in blender uh now for the sun which is a really simple one basically the sun will illuminate the whole scene all the meshes in the scene no matter where you place the sun so let's just rotate it back down to vertical and see no matter where i place it the objects the top of the cubes are still illuminated the same way even if i zoom out place it super far away you can see that the cubes are still being illuminated as such so let's bring the sun back in what you can do with the sun, however, is you can change its strengths and directions to fine tune it further. And usually this is a really low setting, like 1, uh, whereas the others are in watts. This one is just somewhere between 1 to 10. Um, you can't really increase it over that unless you manually do it, like 5000, although this is not really recommended. So keeping it something like 1, you can see that the direction that we rotate the light in affects the way that the shadows present itself in the scene. So I'm just going to back here and press rr and you can see you can see uh the direction of the sun lamp uh will dictate how the shadows are presented i don't really use the sun lamp a lot but it is good if you need to illuminate your whole scene really quickly uh and it's also a really good starting point if you don't really know where to start with your lighting you can just put a sun in you can change the direction and change the strength to kind of see how you want your uh, render to look like uh, at the end all right so now that we've covered all of these different uh light types uh, what we can do now is we can go into the two bonus tips that i have for all of you who stay till the end of the video first bonus tip so let's bring a new window in the shader editor here on my left i already have it up and now uh let's just delete this and let's add in a point light uh, and let's just change this to something high like 500. Now, as you can see, this is currently a white light and you can change the colors to whatever you want. You can have disco lights if you want, but that's not what we're going to do. So we're going to click this point light. We're going to bring up the shader editor and we're going to look for this option called use nodes. Now, this is a really good option if you want to have more realistic lighting, right? So now the point light is going to have uh, a node setup, which basically drives how the light is being presented onto the scene. Um, something to note though is that it's not directly connected to the settings here on the left so these are both independent of each other but what we can do is that we can press shift a uh, and let's press search here and let's look up something called the black body node so this black body node basically uh, dictates how hot or sorry how warm or how cold the light temperature should be so let's just drag the color into the color of the emission and as you can see it's currently an orange color um a good rule of thumb is that with this temperature um, setting here, the lower the number, the warmer your light is going to be. So if you want to get something close to like a household light, uh, for example, you can put in something like 5000. And this is the similar light to that you get in a lot of households in well in North America. And then if you get like 6000, this is more of the white light. Then if you have like 7000, these are like the harsh white lights that you usually see in classrooms. Uh, and if you go crazy and you go something like 10,000, then it's going to start becoming blue, 15,000, and then now the light is going to be really cold. Now, the reason why I suggest this as an option to drive the color of your lighting is because it directly reflects the way that light presents itself in real life. If you want your scenes to be more realistic, you can look up what is the temperature of sunlight, what is the color and temperature of a household light, what's the temperature of an oil lamp, etc, etc, and you can plug that number in into the temperature node here into the black body node sorry into the temperature setting and that way you can be sure that whatever your light uh, color is it will be as accurate as possible to real life so that's the first tip that i'm going to give you today uh second bonus tip let's just delete 
uh, the light here, so our scene is completely pitch black. And still in the shader editor, let's go to the top here at object and let's click the world settings. And now this world setting is uh, pretty bare bones in the beginning. As you can see, just now I turned it all to black to show you the lighting setup. But what we want to do now is we're going to press shift A and we're going to search something called the sky texture. So uh, for those of you who've been in Blender for a long time, you may know that the sky texture is uh, similar to an HDRI, uh, but it's basically to create the scene, uh, your scene with a more realistic lighting setup. So let's just plug this color into the color of the background. And as you can see now, we have this entire scene to play with. Uh, yeah. So. Now we have a lot of options here that we could edit. We have the sun size, as you can see there. We have the sun intensity. So as you can see that big circle in the horizon there, that's the sun. So let's just put that back to one uh, default settings. The elevation. So this is like sometime in noon. You know, this is like sunset. This is like nighttime, you know, the rotation. So where the sun is on the scene, uh, as you can see, this is just like uh, 360. Uh, yeah, so. Then there's the altitude. Do you want to emulate, you know, a sun that's far up in the mountains, somewhere closer to sea level, etc. Uh, so something like 8000 would be very, you know, light. Something like zero would be closer to ground level to your house, maybe. And then we have the air, dust and ozone. So as you can see here, the air is how dense the air molecules are, which would dictate, you know, pollution. Things like if you're if you're making uh, a scene where it takes place in a country that usually has more air pollution, you could increase this uh, value to get something more similar to that. Uh, yeah, and then you have dust again, something similar as well. Dust, dust molecules and water droplets. Again, it will dictate how light pierces the atmosphere and uh, touches ground onto all of these objects. So you can see kind of the effect here if I increase it or decrease it. And then ozone, which is the ozone layer in the atmosphere. Again, I don't really know the physics behind it, but usually increasing it does lead to a more, yeah, a more cold value like this. So I bring this up because I think that the sky texture is a good place for you to start in. Let's just increase this to something high, something like this. It can illuminate your entire scene really, really quickly, really, really easily. And then you can fine tune what you want uh, to do with the scene later. This is amazing for things like daytime scenes, afternoon scenes, uh, and even nighttime scenes. If you really need to fine tune some of the things like the air, dust and ozone and how light penetrates uh, the atmosphere within your scene. So this is the second bonus tip I have for you guys, and I really hope that it was useful. So that's really all for the lighting of Blender. You now know uh, the three different types of lights. Uh, yeah, sorry, no, the, the four different types of lights. Yeah, the four different types of lights, sorry. Now you know the four different types of lights in Blender. You know uh, how to use the black body node, and you also know how to use the sky texture node. And I really hope that these tips are going to go a long way in helping you make more realistic renders, uh, or you know, you gained a little something new about how to use lights in Blender. So thank you again, everyone, for tuning in into this week's video. I hope that you found something useful from it. If there's something that I, that I could help answer, you could always put it down in the comment section down below, and I will try to get to you uh, as quickly as I can, uh, or even answer you with a completely new video, which I've done for videos in the past. If you're not done watching Blender content yet, you could always click this uh, video in the middle of the screen right now, uh, and we'll, that'll take you to my previous video talking about realism in Blender. Other than that, make sure you go down to the description and click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It will really, really help me out in growing my channel as I aim to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Goodbye.